my name is Camilla Corbella. I'm the principal conservator and owner of Adler Outlets. And I will be walking you through the treatment that we had the pleasure to perform here in the labs. It has underwent quite a transformation, as you can see, and we're very excited about the outcome in its actual structural stability that it gained now. So we started with a surface cleaning and it was a very in-depth multi-step surface cleaning where we used um, specific cleaning solution adjusted for pH, conductivity, chelation, um, viscosity and surfactancy. And so after a couple of cleaning steps have been performed we were able to take off so much ingrained dirt that the entire surface considerably improved. Um, and this was basically performed after the, the general vacuum cleaning of the front and the back. Um, simultaneously with that, we stabilized the entire paint layers. So there were numerous insecurities and areas with lifted paint and these we fed with an appropriate adhesive in order to um, have them nice and secure. We heat set those with a spatula, micro spatula, heated, in order to bring them back into plane. Um, so once the entire surface was first cleaned and then simultaneously consolidated, we moved on in order to take care of any type of planar deformations. So some of the patches that were adhered to the back of the painting were responsible for planar deformations within the painting itself and they were quite disturbing. So we removed the patches, um, we properly flattened the area with very controlled moisture, heat, and weights or magnets and after that was done we unstretched the painting entirely and we flattened the overall so after the painting got planar again it regained planarity we were able to modify the structure accordingly in order to better accommodate the painting and to achieve that, we added strip lining. So the strip lining is a piece of canvas that is adhered to the perimeters of the painting on every side. And the adhesive that is being used is not only conservation grade, but it's so incredibly strong that if 10 people were to stand on a fabric that was joined with the beaver adhesive that we have used, it would not tear apart. So, we added these strips, these extended canvas strips, to better pull the painting and secure it onto its original stretcher. Now, because the stretcher in itself was already having an awkward shape, but also the picture plane and where the parameters of the painting um, parameters are located, the awkward shape added significantly to the difficulty of realigning it properly, redistributing all the tension on every side, um, and pulling out less planar distortions that were basically due to the painting having been adhered properly to all sides in the past. So eventually we were able to properly redistribute the tension and regain full planarity. So having a planar surface enabled us then to fill all the little losses in the paint layer. Um, so loss compensation was essentially a two-step process and it started with the filling of losses and then we went over to basically in-paint the losses. So the in-painting is a visual integration of the picture in itself. And 
especially in this area of the sky, there were many disturbances from old dim painting that had considerably discolored and it was just very disturbing and was drawing your eye. Now, um, we have visually reintegrated this area with like little glazes, a little bit of um, more opaque areas in order to to take the eye away from these disturbances and draw it into the beautiful depth of the landscape as we see it here. Um, another thing was that so the varnish that was pre-existent, we did the treatment in order to preserve it. Um, it has a much longer living span and the varnish removal, generally speaking, is a very invasive treatment. So having not compromised the integrity of the varnish as is a top, we were able to do the visual integration of the picture relatively easily. I mean, it was a lot of work, but it is a little bit more easy. But in order to regain this type of saturation, and have a perfect surface, so to speak, we needed to re-varnish the surface also. So we used a um, synthetic resin varnish on top of the old varnish, and this was capable of resaturating the original varnish, giving the paint the depth that it needs, but also protect it better. Um, now the original, or not original, but older varnish and the added varnish will have still a lifespan of 50 plus years, which is great. So um, we'll probably not be needing any maintenance cycle um, that goes a little bit more in depth with the pictorial surface for the next probably 50, 60, 70, 80 years. Um, dependent on, of course, what type of condition the painting is kept in because this is crucial in order for the long-term preservation of any type of work. So, just a quick note to the frame. So, this is the frame. Um, we repurposed it and we retrofitted it. But, as you can see, it has now visually be it has been visually reintegrated. So there were numerous losses and in insecurities. We consol consolidated this insecurities and we filled and impainted the losses and we appropriated the surface as we found it in order to visually close the ensemble. And it now looks very adequate for the painting as is and in the second part of my little video presentation here, I will actually explain to you what else we did to the frame in order to better preserve the painting and to basically keep it as safe as possible. The painting has been transferred onto its original stretcher after the entire treatment of the front side. And we have aligned it properly and stretched it onto its original stretcher in order to preserve the structure and the corner brackets which are patented and very beautiful in their own right. In order to stabilize the entire ensemble we have fastened the corner brackets and rather than structurally um, reinforcing even more because that has actually given the whole structure enormous support um, we only fastened this brace um, in order to have a real secure ensemble and then we added the backing board which is archival and here you can see the labels. The labels we have adhered to acid-free paper and encapsulated with mylar in order for them to be easily removable we just taped it with acid-free linen tape to the reverse of the archival backing board 
and so they can be easily removed and if needed transferred to a new backing board as like the cycles of swapping of backing boards even though they are archival and acid free um, is like around perhaps 60, 70, 80, 90 years. So we left the corner brackets um, with a cat out visible in order to appreciate the aesthetics regardless and in order to give the entire ensemble even more structural integrity we added this um, build up to the back of the actual frame so the build up is basically avoiding for the painting to protrude out its back so this added security for the painting and added structural stability will just like keep it really nicely in place and is, is very advantageous in order for its long-term preservation. Um, in order to, to keep the painting in place, we added cleats that just push the painting very gently against the frame rabbit. And the frame rabbit is lined with uh, polyester felt in order to avoid any future abrasion as has occurred previously as there was no uh, cautioned rabbit. Um, yeah, everything is uh, reversible and removable. So the build up adds structural integrity to the overall ensemble, but it remains reversible from the frame itself and can be reversed at any point in time without affecting the structural integrity of it, without affecting the surface aesthetics. Um, yeah, and so we come already to the end of my presentation and I thank you very much for your attention and for giving me the incredible pleasure of working with this wonderful work of art. We've had such a great time here taking care of this phenomenous painting and I very 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 much thank you for your trust and for your attention and I hope to be working with you soon again. Thank you. <laughs>